The first question that most people ask me is why an e-bike? Why did you go for an e-bike? You've got other road bikes, you cycle a lot, you're fit. Why do you need an e-bike? Well, the answer for me is quite simple. As a British cycling ride leader, it's necessary for me to recce the ride uh, within seven days of the ride taking place. That means if I'm cycling a 45 mile ride, for example, I've then got to ride 90 miles within seven days. Now that's not a problem to me except for the fact that sometimes I don't feel like it so it's very useful to have an e-assist bike. One of my criteria for the e-assist bike is that I wanted to do some work. I didn't want the thing to do the work for me. I wanted to keep fit. I also wanted the bike to look like a bike not, not uh, a moped. So it was necessary to look at the market carefully and decide which would be best for me. What I was finding is that if I was on a ride with my son, for example, who is a much faster rider, I would have problems, particularly on hills, and I, I didn't really like people having to wait for me at the top, although they were happy to do that. So what I found is that having an e-bike allowed me to power up those hills. In fact, I usually overtake them. Uh, and then on the flat, when I get to over 15 and a half miles an hour, I've built up the momentum and I can pretty much keep it there. So it works well for me. I narrowed the market down to two really. It was the Orbea and uh, the Ribble. I like the idea of the Ribble CGR because I wanted to ride on tracks as well as roads on the same ride. The other thing I liked about the Ribble is that uh, you could actually build the bike using their bike builder menu system. Uh, it meant that I could have the bike I wanted rather than the bike the manufacturer wanted to supply me with. Once I decided on the Ribble uh, and I knew the spec I wanted, I went over to their showroom in Birmingham. It is a five hour round trip but well worth it because they put me on their static bike, did all the measurements and they came up with exactly the spec I needed. Now I'm five foot seven, well, fractionally under, I seem to be shrinking, and uh, I needed an extra small frame which surprised me. So be careful when you consider uh, buying a frame from Ribble. Their sizing is slightly different but I will tell you that their uh, guide is extremely accurate. Another reason for choosing Ribble is that they're a British manufacturer. Now okay their frames are made overseas but the bikes are assembled and finished here in the UK. That meant if there was a problem I could easily get some help. Now as it happened I did have a problem with the bike and it had to go back to Ribble and they were fabulous, they picked the bike up, they took it back, they sorted it so I was very happy with that. Now the heart of any electric bike is the motor and the drive system so it's important that you choose a, a manufacturer that's well known. Now I went for the e-bike motion system mainly because that was the one Ribble was offering but uh, when I researched it, I became very, very comfortable with the idea. E-Bike Motion are a Spanish company, but they're owned by the German Mahler Group, which is a huge automotive supplier, a very, very well-respected group. So I felt comfortable from that point of view. The other thing that made me comfortable is that you've got the likes of Pinarello, Willier, Scott, Colnago, some very very big names using that system so uh, I'm, I was pretty happy I was in good hands. Now e-bikes tend to be very heavy it's one one of the common factors uh, this was another reason for choosing the Ribble. With the pedals, saddle and tools this bike weighs in at 15 kilos so although it's no lightweight it certainly can be pedaled as a, as a manual bike. I've already mentioned the Bike Builder app on the Ripple website. That allowed me to choose the basic frame. I was then able to specify the 105 group set. That appealed to me because uh, the 105 system did come with hydraulic disc brakes, which I think are essential, especially on a heavier bike. It's also very useful that the brake calipers are inboard of the frame. That means that you can fit a standard pannier rack if required. And certainly it makes it easier for mud guards. With its go anywhere capability, the CGR is an ideal machine for touring. 
um, especially as we've actually got all the fittings for a, a pannier rack already supplied. I actually have a pannier rack that I fit on this bike. Now the drive system is situated in the hub, so there's the motor. It's the e-bike motion X35 system, and I'll talk more about that shortly. Although some e-bike motion systems do have a control on the handlebars, with this particular model we just have the single iWalk button. So everything is controlled from that one button. And I'll show you how it works. So the first thing we do is press the system on and you can see we started with a white light, we then went to green and we're back to white. Now what this means is that white is showing us that we have a full battery but green is showing us that we are in the first or eco power setting. Now if I want to just press one more time you can see green comes back again. So whenever you're riding if you want to check which power level you're in give the button one press and you, you'll see the green light or the amber which is the mid drive and the red which is high power. Now if we're finding ourselves coming up to an incline and we need some more power press once to get the green and then press again and we see the amber light that means that we've now got our mid-range power setting. If it gets steeper press again twice and we get the red setting. But we always go back to the level of the battery which in this case is 100% this is a fully charged battery. Now as the battery runs down we'll go to green, we'll go to amber, then we'll go to red and then we go to various different stages of flashing. So you can see effectively your battery is divided into 25% segments. So if you get yourself down to red you've got 25% battery left. Now I'm going to show you a control that seems to confuse many people or they don't realize it's there. Now if you're using the app you need to keep the system switched on. Now initially if I was on a long ride and I wasn't using the power I would turn the power off. That means the app turns off as well. So if you're using the app and you want to keep the power system on, many people think they need to stay in drive. But that's absolutely not necessary. So when we're in our red setting, if I press again, it'll take me back to white. And you'll also see I go to white in terms of the amount of battery I've got left. So press again and you can see I'm in white. Now what that actually means is that there is no power being sent to the motor at all, so you are effectively in neutral. So this means that you can ride the bike in the normal fashion with no power, but and I'm told by the manufacturer that this uses hardly any power at all. One thing that I really, really dislike on many e-bikes is the size of the battery that makes the frame huge. Now of course if you want an e-bike that's going to do all the work for you, you're going to need that big battery. Ribble hide the battery inside the down tube and it's no different to a normal oversized down tube. In fact people find it hard to believe that this is an e-assist bike. Now as part of the spec I went for the Schwalbe Marathon 35mm tyres and they work perfectly. This machine will take me from road to gravel to track back onto road and it feels sure-footed with every move. Um, for me it's the perfect bike for uh, any surface. Now what I have I have got a very very nice 29er mountain bike but I find I'm hardly using that these days because I am using the CGR. So if you're looking for an all-rounder a uh, good quality bike at a sensible price then I would suggest the CGR is worth looking at. If you're looking for an e-bike, then think about uh, what you want. Do you want the bike to do all the work, or do you want to do some work and, and keep fit into the bargain? Uh, in which case, the hub drive e-bike motion system on a bike is the one for you, I would suggest. So I think the next thing now is to take the CGR for a ride.
Now this is the uh, horrible hill I have to uh, come up to get home. So no matter how far I've ridden, I usually have to go up this hill. Now it averages 12% and uh, what I'm showing you now is I'm in my lowest gear and if I was really really tired all I have to do is just gently pedal and the bike's going to do the rest. So you know don't be afraid that this bike won't give you the power you need, it will. The obvious question that uh, always comes up is how long do you get from a charge? Of course that's difficult because it depends on the weight of the rider, the sort of terrain you're riding, how, how much your tyres are pumped up, um, how much wind you're riding into, so it varies. But to give you an idea, the sort of standard rides I do where I'll use the system on hills or into wind, uh, but the rest of the time I'm either riding above the 15 and a half mile an hour cutoff or I've got the system turned off. I'll easily get 60 miles. Um, I'm sure if I worked at it I could get 80. However on other days if I'm tired and I want to use more power I might just get 40 miles. So it's, it, it's a case of uh, you've, you've got to work it out for yourself um, what sort of riding you want to do. What I would say is if you want a bike that's going to do it all for you and you don't have to do any work then this type of bike isn't for you. However if you're a, a normal road bike user but uh, like me maybe maybe you're getting on in years a bit or maybe you've got bad knees or something like that this bike is is going to make you feel like it's a good day on the bike you know those days when you're feeling really good uh, your legs are legs are strong uh, that's how this bike feels all of the time so i hope you've found this short review useful uh, if you want to ask any questions uh, please feel free to ask them below and i'll try to answer them uh, what I will be doing shortly is I'll be doing a, a video on the range extender. Now the range extender fits in place of the rear bottle um, and it effectively is, is like a power bank, it charges the main battery. What I intend to do is uh, a long ride and tell you exactly how much we can get out of that range extender. Um, so if you want to know about that please subscribe and hit the bell button and you'll be you'll be told uh, when that comes up so i hope i hope you've enjoyed the video hope it's been useful and um, thanks very much